Good day. I am Dr. Rinaldo Ong Hoson. I was asked to give a lecture with this title, Organization and Management of Emergency Department for HA202 with a time limit of 45 minutes and with the following prescribed learning outcomes or objectives. One, understand the philosophy, objectives, structure, staffing, policies, systems, and methods in running the emergency department of a hospital. Two, understand the roles and relationships of different components of the emergency department. Three, describe the responsibilities of hospital managers in directing and coordinating the emergency department. And four, understand the challenges that might be encountered in the emergency department and to recommend solutions thereof. I will use this generic department design and development framework, which is essentially an administrative design and development program to tackle learning objectives one to three. I said this framework is generic and is applicable to all kinds of departments in the hospital. As such, there, this is applicable to an emergency department. The emergency department is one of the various medical services departments providing 24 seven emergency medical services without prior appointment and on an outpatient basis. The emergency department is one of the subsystems within the hospital, which is the super system. The other departments are called co-subsystems. Using the framework, this slide shows the essential and basic components of an emergency department, which must be present to facilitate accomplishment of its authorized functions and services and achievement of its goals. See the various boxes with the following labels, leadership, authorized functions, authorized services, goals, architectural design, engineering, and construction, physical structure, DOH licensing and structural requirements, policies and procedures, risk management system, human resource program, equipment material program, data documents records program, business development program, budget program, IT enabled system, and regular performance evaluation and continual improvement program. All of these components must be present, aligned, and integrated with, with each other in order to achieve performance excellence for the department. The arrows indicate the need for alignment and integration of all the parts of the department. On the extreme left of the slide, one sees the need for alignment and integration with the whole hospital as well as other departments in the hospital. This slide illustrates the super system, which is the hospital, subsystem, which is a particular department, in this case, the emergency department, and cost systems, which are the interfacing departments. Again, all the arrows indicate the need for alignment and integration of all parts of the subsystems, the department, with a super system, the hospital, and with the cost subsystems, the interfacing departments. Let me repeat, the administrative design and development program should be aligned and integrated with the whole hospital's concept and design all hospitals governance policies and procedures, all hospitals operations policies and procedures, as well as interfacing units 
operations, policies, and procedures. In other words, there must be a system perspective or systems thinking. Leadership. There must be a competent head with at least the following competencies. Unit technical requirements or competency on the specialty of the department. In other words, the head must be an emergency room or emergency medicine specialist. Hospital teamship or team playership. Managers and leadership. Man managership and leadership with systems approach and thinking in management. There must be documents that contain the job descriptions, job specifications, and performance evaluation system of the leaders and managers. Functions. There must be a document stating the authorized functions of the department. It must be complete and clear with general and specific functions, and it must be authorized by a higher office. The authorized functions serve as a compass or guide, describe roles and responsibilities of unit in the context of the whole hospital, give unit authority to do what it should be doing, serve as a guide in determining what are needed in the unit to function properly and adequately, such as in terms of structure, staffing, policies and procedures, programs, and resources, serve as guide in determining what programs, projects, tasks, activities the head and the staff can do to accomplish their unit's functions, both on long-term and short-term basis, serve as basis for evaluating unit's performance at the very least whether it is accomplishing its expected functions on a daily basis and annually, and serve as basis for the name of the unit. Example of list of general functions. One, cater to patients consulting and brought the emergency department needing and seeking emergency medical services without prior appointment 24-7. Two, provide emergency medical services to patients consulting and brought to the emergency department without prior appointment 24-7. Example of list of specific functions. To provide emergency medical services 24-7 to the following patients consulting or brought to the emergency department. Traumatic and non-traumatic patients, victims of mass casualty incidents, and patients who perceive they have serious medical conditions. To provide the following general emergency medical services to patients consulting or brought to the emergency department. Cardiopulmonary resuscitative measures to patients with life-threatening medical conditions medical examination and assessment, medical treatment within the limits of the emergency department, referral to appropriate physicians for follow-up or definitive management after being seen in the emergency department. To provide a system of triage, triaging and response during patient surges, particularly from mass casualty incidents to provide a system of triaging to identify patients who need to be placed in special areas such as isolation rooms and decontamination rooms and who need to be transferred to another hospital for one reason or another. To network with emergency departments of nearby hospitals, particularly during mass casualty incidents, and to network with other hospitals for transfer of patients who cannot be admitted into the emergency department or hospital. Some pointers on the types of patients being entertained at the emergency department. 
any person with whatever medical problem who walks into or is brought to the emergency department should be served. Do not discriminate anymore whether the patient has real emergencies or not. Just assume that all patients in the emergency department have an emergency problem. Services. There must be a document stating authorized services of the department. Formulated functions determine services to be offered to clients, both physicians and patients, and services offered and functions authorized must be congruent with each other. Example of list of uh, services based on authorized functions. Emergency medical services 24 seven for traumatic and non-traumatic patients, victims of mass casualty incidents, and patients who perceive they have serious medical conditions. Resuscitation, medical assessment, medical treatment, referral, management of patient surge, triaging with special areas, networking with other hospitals. Goals. There must be a document stating the goals of the department, which are usually the following, performance excellence, client engagement, meaning returning loyal patient clients, quality and safe healthcare services, cost-efficient value-based services, and maximal utilization of services, ultimately resulting to financial viability and sustainability of the department. Value-based services means value created and appreciated by patient and physician clients for services rendered as a result of good outcomes and results in quality and safe services and associated with reasonable costs and expenses. There must be a document stating the ultimate goals of the department, which must be aligned and integrated with the goals of the hospital. All the department's goals should eventually be contributing to financial viability and sustainability of the hospital. Physical structure. Physical structure of emergency department refers to a geographical space or area in the hospital constructed to receive patient and physician clients requesting for services and to house the staff who will perform the functions of the department. The department leaders must take note of this, that service requirement as dictated by authorized functions is the first determinant of physical structure of the department. The, the department leaders must also take note of the other requirements and determinants of physical structure, statutory and regulatory requirements, DOH licensing requirements, building code, fire code, local government requirements, Specialty requirements, particularly on training and research, human resource program, equipment and material program, data documents records program, budget program, risk management program, business development program, quality standards, community expectations, efficiency, caseload, and owners wants. The fiscal structure of the department must be compliant with EOH licensing and structural requirements, particularly on location and size. In particular, they must comply, comply with the following. Accessibility with clear signage. Adequate size, not cramped for staff and client movement. Adequate lighting. Adequate ventilation. Aesthetics, attractive with a welcoming, friendly, and therapeutic environment. 
provision for privacy as needed, comfortable waiting areas. Architectural design, engineering, and construction. This will be dictated by the DOH licensing and structural requirements and the physical structure requirements. Here are some tips on the architectural design, engineering, and construction and physical structure. In terms of location, it must be accessible to the public, not deeply situated inside the hospital. Wherever it is, there must be adequate road signs and signboards. It must be near supportive departments such as laboratory and radiology. It must be in a location where hospital routines will not be dis disrupted where there is when there is a sudden and great inflow of patients to the emergency department. As to size, it must be of a size that can adequ adequately house essential equipment, facilities, and personnel for it to function effectively and efficiently. Usual number of patients coming in at any given time for consultation and treatment. The other determining factors of size consist of the following. Gover government regulations, needed and expectations of the community, allowance for future expansion, anticipated increase in patients' load and new trends in emergency department medicine, and cost-benefit considerations. As to the architectural design, it must be guided by how an effective and efficient functions can be maximally achieved. It must consider the where and how, and of course the size for equipment, functional areas, facilities, personnel, and patients. This slide illustrates an efficient architectural design where there is a counter in the center of the depart emergency department, which can serve simultaneously as a triads counter, reception counter, and monitoring center where where the staff can easily look at a good distance on what are going on at the surrounding treatment areas. Other tips, entrance must be a precise that can accommodate a standard stretcher bed. Curtains and body folds are recommended for cubicle dividers to give larger space when needed. Stretcher beds are preferred over stationary examining tables and standard hospital beds for mobility and flexibility. Pipe-in gases and suction contribute to convenience and efficiency. Note, there will be many and varied architectural designs as there are hospitals, architects, changing requirements of DOHs, patient clients, and physician clients. The bottom line is the architectural design must be one that is guided by how an effective and efficient functions and services can be maximally achieved, but still compliant with DOHs and local government regulations and quality healthcare and patient safety standards. Human resource programs or staff. This consists of MDs or physicians, emergency medicine specialists, residents, interns, etc., which support staff such as nurses, providing 24 7 emergency medical services without prior appointment and on an outpatient basis. There must be a document showing job descriptions, job specifications, and performance evaluation systems of human resource in the department. There must be documentation of adequacy in number and in competency. Some pointers on human resource requirements. There must be physicians, nurses, nursing aides, 
clerks, security guards, driver of ambulance, and others, which should be adequate in number and in competency. Medical staffing can be by one or combination of the following consultants, physicians hired by the hospital, residents and interns if present. The interns and residents are adjunct to the consultants and physicians hired by the hospital. In majority of hospitals in the Philippines at present, physicians hired by the hospital are usually the main medical staff. In big hospitals, particularly in metro cities, emergency medicine specialists manning emergency department is becoming a trend. Pattern of medical staff is dependent on one, presence of trainees like residents and interns, two, willingness of non-emergency medicine consultant specialists to go on duty at the emergency department, and three, economic feasibility and viability of employing emergency medicine specialists to man the emergency department. Whatever be the pattern of medical staffing, there should be an adequate coverage by competent physicians who are physically present in the emergency department and who are supported by medical staff with full clarification of all professional, legal, and financial implications. Who should man the emergency department? Any full-pledged physician will do as long as he knows what he's supposed to do. However, the best person nowadays will be an emergency room specialist. Who is the emergency department officer? He is a physician who has a license to practice medicine and who mans the emergency department. The five general functions of the emergency department officer consist of the following administrator, physician, medical legal officer, trainer, and patient search incident commander. Thus, the competencies expected of the emergency department director consists of the following, administration, emergency medicine, health profession education, research, risk and disaster management. Equipment and material program. There must be a document showing adequacy of equipment and materials needed to facilitate an effective and efficient functioning of the unit in consideration of the key functions and services, statutory and regulatory requirements, and other objectives like business development, risk management, and IT-enabled system. There must be documents showing the presence of a management system of equipment and material program, which include, among other things, preventive maintenance and calibration, especially of precision biomedical equipment. Some pointers on equipment in the emergency department. Based on functions and services, the minimum essentials consist of the following cardiopulmonary resuscitation, those needed to resuscitate and stabilize patients with life-threatening conditions before a more definitive treatment can be done within the hospital proper. proper. The equipment must be effective and of high quality, efficient in carrying out the objectives of the emergency department, stored in cabinets with proper labeling, always available when needed, and convenient to use by the personnel. The basic equipment consists of the following, airway adjuncts, breathing adjuncts, electrocardiographic equipment, emergency drugs and IV fluids, surgical equipment and supplies, obstetrical equipment and supplies, diagnostic equipment and facilities, record section or record system, transport system, and telecommunication system. 
there must be at least one ambulance which is considered as, as an extension of the emergency department. It must be fully equipped with at least basic and advanced life support system. It may be outsourced. Data document records program. There must be documents showing adequacy and accuracy of data, documents, and records needed to facilitate an effective and efficient functioning of the unit in consideration of the key functions and services of the unit, statutory and regulatory requirements, and other objectives like business development, risk management, and IT-enabled system. Examples are patient records, governance and operations manual, department statistics, and others. Business development program. There must be a document showing the presence of a structured and comprehensive program that will develop the business of the unit to make it viable and sustainable. Budget program. There must be a document showing a budget that projects future income and expenses of the unit and the budget is being used as a guide for day-to-day -day performance and financial evaluation at planned intervals. Risk management program. There must be a document showing a risk management program which is a planned and systematic process or program to reduce and or eliminate the probability of a risk that usually results in injuries, losses, and legal suits. The program may also look, may also include risk with potential positive effect, not just negative effect, in, like improving business and client engagement. IT enabled system, there must be a document showing the use of IT or computing technology to promote efficiency in performance of functions and accomplishment of services, to manage information of units such as getting, storing, protecting, processing, transmitting, and later retrieving as necessary, to create interconnection with other units in the hospital for timely communication, coordination, and collaboration in, a, in accomplishment of services of the unit and to communicate with the patient and physician clients both in and out of the hospital. Policies and procedures, clinical practice guidelines, and clinical pathways. There must be documented policies and procedures, clinical practice guidelines, and clinical pathways that serve to provide order to promote standardization, to facilitate communication, to promote effectiveness and efficiency, and to, pro to provide a guide to present and future staff, among other things. Policies and procedures must be aligned with those of the hospital. They should be reviewed and revised periodically. Clinical practice guidelines and clinical pathways are akin to policies and procedures but more focused on patient management. Clinical practice guideline is defined as systematically developed statements built on synthesis of evidence which provide formal recommendations about appropriate and necessary care intended to assist the practitioner and patient to make decisions about appropriate health care for specific clinical circumstances. Examples of titles of CPGs are CPG on poisoning, head injury, stroke, etc. Clinical pathway, on the other hand, is an interdisciplinary plan of care that outlines the optimal sequencing and timing of intervention and expected outcomes for patients with a particular diagnosis, procedure, or symptoms. Examples of titles of CPAT or clinical pathways are CPAT on gastroenteritis, acute airway obstruction, etc. Some pointers on policies and procedures. 
The Manual of Policies and Procedures should contain the following governance, service, training, and research. Other specific areas to cover emergency medical services and emergency department, referrals, whether either internal or external, account settlement, deposit, triaging, emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases, patient surge situations, death on arrival, do not resuscitate, and firearms, and others. Policies and procedures on pertinent statutes and administrative or regulatory orders, such as deposit, emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases, and reporting of reportable diseases. There must be formulated clinical practice guidelines on common medical conditions encountered in the emergency department, such as stroke, heart attack, trauma, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, asthma, and others. There must be formulated clinical pathways on common medical conditions encountered in the emergency department, such as stroke, heart attack, trauma, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, appendicitis, and others. There must be formulated service, service pathways on common activities and services in the emergency department, such as account settlement and referral to other hospitals. Some pointers on the medical referral system in which there should be policies and procedures to promote alignment coordination, collaboration, and integration of all the staff of the depart emergency department as well as those of the other departments in serving the patients of the emergency department. Foremost assumption and policy is only immediate medical treatment can be rendered within the limits of the emergency department setup are administered. Most patients will be needing follow-up or further treatment. Thus, referral to other consultants in the hospital who are not staff of the emergency department. An effective and efficient medical referral system contributes to effective and efficient achievement of the functions and services of the emergency department. The last box, Regular Performance Evaluation and Continual Improvement Program. There must be a document that shows a program to appraise the extent of accomplishment of the unit in its authorized functions and business plans at plan intervals, such as quarterly, biannually, and annual, and to determine areas of improvement and to act on them. At this point, I'd like to say that I have covered the learning objectives one to three using the department design and development framework, philosophy, objectives, structure, staffing, policies, systems, and methods in running an emergency department, roles and relationship of the different components of an emergency department, and lastly, responsibilities of hospital managers in directing and coordinating the emergency department. Have I done this? Let's now go to the last learning objective, which is common challenges encountered in the governance of an emergency department together with their suggested strategic solutions. The challenges can be in at least five categories, man, system and methods, machine and equipment, money and other resources, Trends in emergency, the management of emergency department, as well as emergency medicine. Under demand categories are the consultants, residents, colleagues in other units, chief of hospital and other bosses, and of course, the subordinates. The common problems are competencies, quantity, alignment, coordination, collaboration, and integration, and personality. Suggested strategies consist of leadership and managership skills, 
managing your boss, such as man managing his personality, adjusting accordingly to his or his or her mindset and mood, and the use of multi-sectoral, multi-professional commit committee membership to engage everybody into alignment, coordination, collaboration, and integration. Under the system and method category, common problems are lack of systematization in doing things, lack of standardized procedures. Suggested strategies use the DOH licensure requirements as guide to standardize things, use the uh, quality standards as guides such as the PhilHealth Beds Book, Joint Commission International, and Accreditation Canada International, establish policies and procedures, formulate clinical practice guidelines, and clinical pathways. Under the machine equipment category, common problems are lack of management system, lack of calibration and preventive maintenance of machine and equipment, suggested strategies, policies and procedures. Under money and other resource category, limited resources is always a problem. Suggested strategies, leadership and innovativeness on how to get money and other things. Under trends in emergency medicine department management and emergency medicine category, the most common problem is the rapid change in the trends, which op oftentimes are difficult to cope. Suggested strategies are knowledge management system with constant tracking and continual education of the new on the new development, benchmarking with other hospital, with other emergency department, and innovativeness. I'd like to end my lecture by flashing again the topics that I have covered. Philosophy, objectives, structure, staffing, policies, systems, methods in running the emergency department of a hospital, roles and relationship of the different components of the emergency department, responsibilities of hospital managers in directing and coordinating the emergency department, challenges that might be encountered in the emergency department, and possible solutions. My parting advice is, remember and use this framework. It is generic. It is applicable to all departments. It is comprehensive. It facilitates learning, planning, and governance of a department. Just put in the details in the boxes, the contents also, and compile them into an operations manual. Again, also remember this starting table with the five categories, man, system, and methods, machine, and equipment, money, and trends. And recall the common problems under each category in my suggested strategies. You can add more as needed based on your settings and circumstances, particularly on the strategies. With this, I'd like to conclude my lecture. I really hope you have acquired the prescribed learning outcomes through my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention.